Germany. An opportunity came up at work. I thought being somewhere completely different, I could learn to live without them. Of course I didn't. I, um, I've only been back 18 months. All those years away were just killing time. I never started a new life at all. I, I wanted to put things right, but the longer I left it, the more I thought she hated me, the more I thought she hated me, the more I put it off. Sarah said that after Becky died, she'd often get into bed with you for a cuddle. <laughs> yes, she did. <sighs> when she was upset or had a nightmare. I know it sounds bad, but I never liked her being in my bed. I would never touch her like that. Quite the opposite. I pushed her away. Who does the doll belong to? What doll? We saw a doll's head under the chair in your living room. Whose is it? <laughs> My ex had a little girl. We broke up about a month ago. I still keep finding bits of Lego and toys about the house. Well, thanks, Mark. You've been very helpful. Uh, interview terminated at 10.58. So, um, what happens now? Is it just a case of Sarah's word against mine? Well, the child abuse investigation team will speak to social services to see what they have on Sarah's file, and I'm sure you understand that we take this sort of allegation very seriously. Mark's theory that his daughter's seeking revenge might be true, but there are easier ways for Sarah to get back at him. I mean, this is quite extreme. It is, but the fact that he's in contact with other children is of some concern. I just contacted Interpol. Why? Uh, well, Mark spent a long time in Germany. We thought we'd contact the authorities there to see if he'd come to their attention. They're going to call me back. Very good. OK, pay Sarah another visit. See if you can find out if any of our friends ever stayed over or if they ever seemed odd in front of our dad, anything that might corroborate her story. Okay. We need more evidence. Oh, by the way, the uh, child trafficker yesterday. Julius Nadaga? Yeah. I thought you'd like to know he's going to be waking up tomorrow morning in one of Her Majesty's establishments. That's wonderful. Yeah, so it looks like you're working with me again. No complaints here. No complaints. You're going to get a big fat head. <laughs> Captain's just a normal guy. Stable salary, no form. Oh, the Lawson must have some kind of hold over him to get him involved in something like this. You know, I'm glad you're taking on board what the DCI said and keeping an open mind about this case. Captain could be kosher. Oh, come on, Mickey, not you too. Look, am I the only one around here who actually wants to get Smithy out? We'll put it this way, your dedication to his cause is unbelievable. Fine. Be back in ten. Okay. Look, I only need a couple. It's for a few hours max. I'll take whatever dregs you want to hand over. Uh, we don't have dregs in the team. No, of course you don't. That's not what I meant. It's just... It's not a terribly taxing job, so whoever you can spare will be fine. <sighs> OK. And I just the men for the job. Carl Kaplan's got two jobs. He works as a paper pusher for an insurance firm, and he also does evening work for a catalogue delivery company, address and photo. Now, listen, I need to know who he meets, where they meet. If he does anything out of the ordinary, and believe me, this guy is Mr Ordinary, so anything at all, give me a ring. Oh, don't worry, it's in safe hands. Even didn't choose us for nothing. Mickey! Have you seen DC Nadir? Uh, getting coffee, I think. You should hear this. You heard a reported sighting of Pat Gannon, Larson's hitman. Liverpool are emailing us some CCTV stills they captured of him at the port. Well, he's hardly going to be getting on a boat to Ireland, is he? He's going to be lying low. Which is why we need to make sure it is him. So get someone to set up the facial recognition programme. This is our strongest lead. We need to act on it straight away. Sure. It's good to be back on Smithy's side, Gov. MIT's approach left a bad taste in my mouth. So what now? He'll get away with it because it's his word against mine. The thing is, Sarah, old cases like this are difficult to prove, so the more information we get, the better it is. Sarah, did you keep a diary or speak to anybody like an old school friend? No, but I've blocked the whole thing out for 20 years. Did you have friends that came over to your house a lot after your mother died? 
Oh, you think you might have abused them too? I don't know. I'm just trying to explore the possibilities because the more you can corroborate your allegations, the stronger your case is going to be. Look, I'm sorry. But I don't remember much about that time at all. OK, um, <clears throat> let's talk about the pattern of abuse. Pattern? I think what Terry means is if you can be specific about the days and times of when the abuse took place. You said it happened when you climbed into bed with your dad for a cuddle. Did he ever prompt it by coming into your room? I don't know. I don't think so. Look, I'm sorry, I don't think I can go through this again. Again? Well, my therapist knows everything. It was hard enough going through it with him. I don't think I can do it with you as well. He's got notes, tapes, loads of stuff about it. If, if you want details, then speak to him. We don't want to upset you. So with your permission, we'll speak to the therapist, listen to these tapes. If you're finding it too hard, yes? Yeah, I'd, I'd prefer that. That's no problem. <sighs> you must think I'm pathetic. I'm sorry. This has got to be the most boring day's work ever. Yeah, well, of course, the key to covert work is patience. Patience and keen eyes. The trouble with the new recruits is they've got very short attention spans. I'll blame it on the ever-increasing pace of society myself. I mean, you don't have to wait for anything these days, do you? It's all fast food and emails and digital photography. Well, and of course, with all these technological advances, the basic social skills are suffering, aren't they? Communication is becoming more and more remote. I mean, before long, people won't be able to have fascinating discussions like this, will they? No, that would be a shame. So, I mean, they just won't, don't they? It, uh, Tony is coming out. Are you sure you don't want a coffee? No, thanks. We'll try not to keep you too long. Don't worry. My first client's not in until one. Nice hours. Can't complain. So, you said this is about Sarah Connolly? Yes, it is. She's given us written consent so that we may speak with you. Sarah's made an allegation of sexual assault against her father. She said she was thinking of reporting him. I'm glad she has. How can I help? Well, um, she really couldn't give us much detail, but she was very distressed. So I think she was hoping that we'd get more information from you. No problem. So could we have the tapes of your sessions together? That way we won't take up too much of your time and also we won't miss anything. I don't want you to think that I'm one of those obstructive types, but I would be extremely reluctant to do that. In my opinion, Sarah is not in a fit state to make that kind of decision. Oh. Uh, well, obviously, you know her much better than we do. But um, she appeared very together to me. She's up and down. One session can vary dramatically from another. That's why I'm being cautious. Look, this won't form part of the case. I mean, we couldn't use it as evidence, for instance. It's just another bit of information to help us out. Sorry. No. Sarah may regret giving her consent. You do understand my position? Yes, of course. You don't like him, do you? No. Nope. Have you seen how empty his diary is? Mind you, the prices he charges, you wouldn't need many clients, would you? Yeah. Hundred pounds an hour. You should have seen what my plumber charged me last week. Going back to Mark and Sarah, you can't blame a therapist for wanting to protect his client's confidentiality, can you? Could be him. Same build, 